Okay, today we're going to be unboxing um, the new Stinger B. This is the second edition. It will have, instead of the bolt-in heat sink. So we're just gonna go through that real quick here. This is a really fast way of doing it. This is how you get your Stinger, uh, your instructions. These are all the links to the uh, firmware that you need for it, and that's constantly being changed. So visit our website often. So this is what you get. This is your cover. I'll just unbox this as I go. Your fangs, everything comes pre-assembled. We have solderless connectors. That way you can trim these to whatever length you need them. And the solderless connectors that are in the package here, you'll be able to crimp those into place and they have a little heat shrink tubing around them. And you'll heat shrink them in. They're really great stuff. So you know, just take these out of here, get this out of the way. This is the main body. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the cover. We're going to remove the fan and we're going to remove this back cover here. So we're going to get to this. Two Phillips head screws. This goes right in there. We'll grab the tool for those when we have that. There's four screws that remove the fan. It actually removes the fan shroud with the fan connected to it. So these come out real simple. This comes out as one unit. We'll set that aside. We'll get our screws all in one place. Okay, so now what we have is that we have the main chassis and the backing plate together. And we're gonna remove the retainer ring. And that is a three millimeter, I believe it is two and a half to three millimeter Allen. These are all available, I'm using these little speed wrenches. These are all available in your CR10 kit. You get these with it. This is probably the most used one. And then this comes out. Okay, we are going to jump to the actual uh, backing plate installation here. And what I'm pointing out are the mounting screws that are uh, captive in the plate, in the back plate, and where the locations where they mount to. You'll see the two I just pointed to are the original hot end holder, and the other two are um, on the other side of the plate from that. Uh, it's a pretty ins uh, simple installation here. You'll see I'm wrestling with some wires. This was a E3D uh, hot end installation where I put in and soldered the wires first um, for the installation for that. Um, so usually it goes a little bit easier than this. I can say I was struggling. I was in a cramped space in this uh, environment here. Uh, you'll also see in the video there is a uh, the front let's wait till we get to him you'll see the chassis on the front of the plate actually moves up to position into position from holes that are through the brackets I'm going into a uh, in through the front plate right now to get this screw this is one of the screws originally that the hot end uh, screwed into on the CR-10. We're just going to start that screw. And we're going to go around and try to start all of the screws and, and keep them a little loose. That keeps the tension off them. It's easier for the other screws to align. All right, what I'm illustrating here, we're, we're back inside between the two brackets and we're going after the other CR-10 hot end mount. The one on this end, this is where we are going in to the bracket. You can see one of the side brackets has a hole in it where your wrench fits through and you lift up on the chassis in order to get it to align to the head of the screw. The wrench can align to the head of the screw and you're able to turn it. It takes a little fiddling. You can kind of feel it as you're pushing in with the wrench uh, drop into the socket. You want to be turning the socket while you're doing that. 
it's a little fiddly, but uh, once you get the hang of it, once you're in there, you, you know you're in there. We don't want to tighten this down quite yet. And the top screw, that is also the spring retra retaining screw. We we'll want to be careful. We don't put too much pressure on that right now at this point. So we're starting over from the first screw we started on. We're actually snugging it. Second screw, the second hot end, CR10 hot end screw. We're just snugging these down. You'll see the chassis move up and down while we're doing that to align the holes, the wrench holes with the screw head. You just want to draw that up real slow. If you feel any uh, tension, pre-tension, like there's a screw strip and you want to stop, back out on the screw and then uh, go back in with it. We're now going to cut back to the CR10 uh, hot end installation. Okay, and I want everybody to just take note <clears throat> of something here. The hole inside of here is clearance for your Bowden tube to run down through. And this is a set screw in here, and it takes the small Allen wrench that's also in your toolkit with your CR10. Now, what I did was I did a cold removal. Of this. Normally when you remove this and you remove the Bowden tube you want to heat this all up and you want to extract the Bowden tube here but you don't have to do that with this. You can remove it cold. Now I snip my wires here. Um, these I can connect right here. This is where the solderless connectors come in on these on these wires here. So this is a real fast assembly. You're just going to pull this and you're going to squeeze in on your on your collar here on this and just pull it all the way off. Then you're going to thread you're going to thread this adapter to it all the way down to your hot end. It screws right in there. Now there's a couple different trains of thought on this one. <clears throat> you can screw this in and you see how it doesn't align with the squareness of this. Um, a little bit to that, but I would suggest go back to the to the last place where you can get it square on your heater block. There's not a lot of adjustment down there. It makes your heater block crooked. And you want to get that set screw, which is the inside screw. You want to just set that down. And one thing you got to watch for when you're doing this. Okay, we're just going to put it in there kind of snug. You want to make sure that your heater block is perpendicular to the way that these screw holes are in here. So you want that just about as perfect as you can get it. I'm going to just loosen this up. Zero that in. You can adjust that later. You can adjust it when this is in the machine, so you don't have to do this it's not set in stone now. Okay, we're going to set that pretty good and tight. Okay, just check your fit. Check everything. You can put this on now. This is probably your best time to put your fitting on. Remember, when you're going over this first little edge, it's going to be a little tough. It's going to probably catch, catch on this edge. might have a little burr there. So you want to push down on your... Just slide that all the way down in. Like so. You just relieve it by pushing this in. That allows it to slide inside this nut while you're tightening it down. And you don't kink your Bowden tube in there. Just keep relieving that pressure. And that also can be tightened later. I choose to tighten mine now. Give that a little bit of tension. And you can feel it bottom. This is designed so that the bottom of these fittings bottom right into this adapter. You're set. So you're going to thread this in. Th 
through the stinger. Remember your nozzle's in front. You're going to thread these through the wire hole, which is up here on the left-hand side. bend those wires just a little bit to guide them there you go and now you're ready for your ring ring can go on either way there's no top or bottom you're gonna look for the two alignment holes they're gonna be across from each other here you can stick a screwdriver or allen wrench in here to kind of align everything before you start fishing with the screws find that hole there. Okay, this is going to put that in loose. I'm going to bind that other screw. We'll just put a little tension on those. Double check, you're in. You're complete. Check for free movement. Make sure this spring is pushing it all the way down against the bottom of this little the deck piece. Down the chassis piece, I'm sorry, sorry, against this little catch on the bottom here. So you got we gave ourselves plenty of wire. We can do our wiring now outside of the of the stinger. And uh, everything can be reassembled at this point. So we're gonna put the fan back on. And this fits pretty tight up against your heat sink, so if there's any wires or anything in the way, you'll feel it. You're done. This would be a good time to um, mention that while this is disassembled, this actually goes on. We did this for the sake of showing you how this assembles in here. This actually goes backing plate bolts to your CR10 before you start putting this part in. It's a lot easier that way. In fact, it's impossible because there's some screws you have to get to from behind here, some openings to get to the screws. It, it comes with the screws already stubbed out in here. They're already captive in here behind this plate. And you put this up against your CR-10 after you take the stock uh, hot end apart. And you put this right up against it and you just screw the screws in. They go right into the stock hole. So it's a real simple installation. Hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to highlight a couple things right now. This is for your end switch for your CR-10. And as you're you mount your end switch in here and as your C, as your Z comes down to touch off you can see what it does it hits your end switch in there and it tells the controller that you've hit uh, the bottom or the build plate on here and what you do is you set an offset in there and, uh, there's another video on how to do that but um, I've got some real exciting news though the reason I mentioned that this is a little adapter that fits into these into this grooved adjustment right here and you would remove the plastic one that comes with it and you would put this in it's got a little clamp in it when you tighten the screws this is for an eight millimeter induction probe and one of the nice things about the stinger is you can use an induction probe on it, it um, induction probes sense metal and uh, capacitive probes don't Induction probes are um, a better probe. There's, you know, arguments out there about what's better and what's not. I found this to be a better probe. There's many tests out there that uh, that uh, justify that. 
Um, and it's the, another nice thing about it, it's up here, it's mounted up here on this bracket, and it's away from your build plate. So if you have any electrical remote build plate, um, this is not affected by it, like if you had your probe down here on the deck, on the surface of it. So that's a real nice thing about this. And it fits behind this cover. You see this probe is an 8 millimeter cover, and it's got a hole that's large enough to accept the probe. Probe sticks up about this high when it's in practice, and there's a little LED light that you can see when the probe is activated. Just, you can see the LED light here. So I just thought I'd throw that out there while we, while we have this out. And uh, this is the brain for it. It's basically a relay, and uh, it hooks up to any probe. There's two, the, number two and three are your plus and minus DC current coming in, and you can hook any NPN or PN probe to this little unit here. It's called the simple probe because it's very simple to hook up. And then it plugs right into your CR10's uh, main harness where the Z switch normally does. And it's got normally open and normally closed, which means you can use it on any type of printer. Some printers have a normally open, uh, sorry, normally closed switch, and then when you activate them, they open. And the CR10 has the normally, the normally open, which closes when it's contacted. So this works either way. Uh, great little combination here. Um, I've got that on all of my machines, and uh, believe me, that's really the way to go. You've got a, enough stuff congestion around the hot end of your machine here. You don't need probes hanging off and doing offsets in your, in your firmware and stuff. This probe's right where the tip is on it. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty nice unit. Um, hope everybody enjoyed this. I will, um, I'll do the installation in another video. Uh, there's a couple of videos I've got out there with the installation, but uh, this, this does it for the bee stinger. What you'll also find in, the, in your box when you get it, this is the shipping container. These are those solderless connections. Make all your connections with by crimping them. And then uh, this is a heat shrink tubing around them. So the heat shrink in. You get a strain relief that's specially made to fit around these. These are, uh, replace your springs underneath your table. You're now so solid mounted. You get four of those. Plenty of zip ties for your wire. You can neaten everything up. This is the wire that connects the end switch. That connects your CR10 end switch directly into the wiring harness on your CR10. These, these plugs are the same exact type of plugs that the CR10 has. So there's no wondering which direction to plug them or anything. That's Gotta have a sticker. Gotta have two stickers. <laughs>